Good afternoon. Now, when there is an issue that touches our lives intimately on a daily basis, and if something destabilizes that, a media-driven society like us will come out in protest. We will launch campaigns, whether it is about water or pollution or saving the tiger, saving the whale, saving the bird, uh, saving trees. We always have save the something campaign happening all the time. Today is the Earth Day. Tell me, up to today, has any one of you heard of a campaign called Save the Vegetable, like Bindi Bachao, ya Bangan Bachao. I mean, we don't hear of a campaign which says Save the Vegetable. And because we are a media-driven society, we, it would be safe to assume that because nobody is shouting about it, everything is hunky-dory and there is nothing wrong going on with our vegetables or its biodiversity. Now, in this presentation, I will try and show you how far from reality that thought is. How much we really need to think of what's happening to our vegetables. I will also discuss with you why this is happening and most importantly, I will discuss with you how each and every one of you can help in rectifying the huge problem that we actually have but know nothing about. There was an infographic in the uh, July issue 2011 in the National Geographic and this succinctly captures what the situation is when it comes to biodiversity of vegetables. You know, let's play a small thought game. Let's move back a hundred years. The lady of the house has given you a shopping list for vegetables and she says, buy me two cabbages, buy me some two pounds of peas, a pound of tomatoes and some sweet corn and maybe a pumpkin. And today, if you were to look at that list, you would say, I mean, what a simple list. This is a cake, a cakewalk. But if you went back a hundred years and you went to this market with this shopping list, you would have something like 544 varieties of cabbages. She's asked you for two cabbages. You've got 544 different varieties of cabbages in the market. You would have 480 varieties of peas. 408 varieties of tomatoes, 341 varieties of pumpkins, you would have 307 varieties of sweet corn. Can you imagine what we had on this planet? And in just over a hundred years, we've lost 98.8% of this entire biodiversity. This was a study that was done by the Amer American Research Foundation in 1983 based on what was the biodiversity of the top 10 vegetables, top common 10 vegetables in 1903. And they found that 93% of the biodiversity was lost in just 80 years. That was in 1983. Today, I've done my research and 99.8% of all the vegetables that existed they are gone and we don't even know about it. There's never been a campaign that said, save these vanishing vegetables. So it's imperative that we understand how this could have happened. How can it happen right under our nose and in this age of digital technology, we don't even know about it. You know, in the 1960s when the Green Revolution happened, I was doing my PhD then in the late 70s and I belong to the parampara, the lineage of people like Dr. Norman Borlaug, Dr. M. S. Swaminathan, Dr. M. B. Rao. They were my gurus. And we ushered in the Green Revolution into this, into this country because our mandate was we needed national food security. We, have, we wanted to have enough food. Therefore, we were the generation that championed use of hybrid seeds, use of urea, use of DAP, use of bore wells. I mean, we championed chemical agriculture. 
But at that time, there was some voice inside me which kept asking, what you're propagating, is that sustainable? For years ahead, would there be a backlash on our health, on the uh, uh, health of the soil, on the health of the human body? Something kept. And then when that voice became louder, I said, okay, forget it. I'm going to change my line of study. So I went to Baton Rouge in the US and I studied architecture. And my entire professional career was that of an architect where I uh, specialized in landscape architecture and sustainable environments. Now, one of the nice things that happened here was it allowed me to travel to very remote parts of the world. And because I had this gnawing feeling that we were losing biodiversity, I used to talk to the older generation of farmers, the ones who were the previous generation. I'd sit with them and talk to them, ask them, what would they grow? What were they growing in their days? And what's happening today? And invariably, to my surprise, these people would have saved a few seeds, two seeds, five seeds, ten seeds, somewhere from inside they would bring, and they would share that with me. And they would give it to me because they understood my passion to bring these varieties back into mainstream. And so over the next 35 years, I kept collecting seeds and I would share it with other like-minded individuals through the International Seed Savers Exchange. And you know, it was something that was happening. And then I realized that what really is happening in the domain of something we call the seed industry. You know, for 10,000 years, if I gave you a seed, if a farmer gave you a seed, farmers always made their own seeds. They harvested the crop. At the end of the season, they would take the best plants and they would take the seeds from that plant and use it for the next generation. And they would share it with their fellow farmers or whoever wanted it. And man, in fact, drew the evolution of vegetables. Man carried them across the seeds from their centers of origin. And most of the vegetables that we have in India today don't belong to India. But they were brought in by people. Similarly, Indian vegetables were taken out by people. So it was always a people's movement. And these indigenous varieties, all these multiple varieties of cabbages, etc. that I showed you, these varieties, the beauty about it is, if you have one seed, you can grow it and make a million seeds on your own. Nobody can stop you from doing it because they are true to that type. You grow that seed, the same plant will come out of that seed. So there is no business model in this. It is just man preserving what nature has given him. But somewhere in the Green Revolution and after, somebody decided, let's make seeds an industry. Now, if you have to make a business model of a seed, and if I don't come back to you to buy the seed next generation because I can make my own seed, there is no model. It's like a cobbler who made such wonderful shoes for his village that he went out of business because nobody came to buy another pair. The, the pair was so good, the shoes were so good that nobody would come. Therefore, the seed industry became very smart and they started making seeds from which the farmer could not make seed like hybrid seeds for example you can't the farmer cannot make seed from seed he has to go and buy back from the parent company the seeds for the next generation so they started this culture where the seed farmers actually became the seed buyers the seed keepers those farmers who kept seed for 10000 years became seed buyers then came the gmo the GMO seeds and you have companies which introduce a gene called the terminator gene. A terminator gene is if suppose a farmer sows the seed of that GMO plant, there is a terminator gene which kills the, uh, the plant which germinates from that seed. So the farmers have no option but to go back and buy the seeds. Today in India, today being the earth day of uh, this time, this year, all the seed, vegetable seeds sold by the seed companies in India are hybrid or GMO. So all those beautiful varieties that we had, all those wonderful, wonderful varieties that we had, 
now are gone. What was so common 20, 25 years ago, all over, you don't get these varieties anymore. So during this particular TED talk, I want to focus on the enigma of this infinity because it looks to us, because we are not campaigning save the bindi or save the tomato, that the vegetables will be with us for an infinite number of time. But the enigma is, right in front of us, these are disappearing. And when I said I go to all parts of the world, I reach out to farmers, this is how you spend the time. You have to go, you have to talk to them, you have to build up a rapport with them, and then they may part with a few seeds. And so many varieties, like there was a variety of brinjal, which in the old days of East Pakistan, which is now Bangladesh, it was a very popular variety in Bangladesh. Uh, it's a very peculiarly shaped brinjal. I have a picture that will come up later on. But it used to be put into biryanis because it was a very fleshy and firm textured brinjal. Very famous, very tasty. But today, if you go, you will not find one single plant of this brinjal anywhere. Forget the vegetable in the market. Now, in Purlia district, which is actually a border district of India and Bangladesh, I had gone to do a farmer's training, teaching farmers to do chemical-free farming, Vedic agriculture. And then I was discussing with an old farmer about this particular variety of brinjal, which was so famous in East Bengal or Bangladesh. And then he ran inside and he came back to me with a small piece of dried up brinjal, which may have had some 13 or 15 seeds in it and he gave it in my hands. I mean, the trust that he had to give it in my hands. Today, I have been able to bring this variety back because this is so special. I mean, this is nature's gift to us. It is as big as a tiger disappearing or a lion disappearing from the planet. These vegetables are a part of our heritage. In 2011, when I came back, uh, to India and I worked with the Art of Living Foundation with over, I worked with over 2 million farmers, 20 lakh farmers across the country and when I started uh, touring India teaching farmers, I realized in India we were losing these varieties left, right and center and therefore I started this, uh, 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 this exercise in my own farm in the outskirts of Bangalore where I gathered 560 varieties of indigenous seeds, that is desi beej, what we call here. I tested them for genetic stability, for environmental uh, suitability, for purity, uh, and the ability to multiply and make vegetables and seeds from them. And I'm happy to state that today, of this 560 varieties, I have managed to bring back to this planet 142 varieties of the most wonderful varieties of vegetables that you will see. For example, look at these beans. All these are barbati beans and look at the colors, the flavors, the taste. These varieties were gone. They were not there. But at Haryali Seeds today, you can find them. I share them with you. You can go and get them online and you can grow them. And the best part is, you can make your own seeds and share it with your friends. Look at the variety of Simla Mirches and chilies. All these, each one of them is actually a Simla Mirch. You would never have seen these varieties, but yet they are our heritage. And if we don't do something about it, the seed companies are never going to do anything about it. So it is up to us to make sure that these do not become extinct. We do not lose them forever. Look at these varieties of corn. Makka dekha hai apne. But look at these varieties of corn. Pink corn, blue corn, black corn. I've even got from Chhattisgarh this time a corn which is beautiful. It's like emerald green. Green color ka. The Makka dana which is there. Brilliant. I mean most beautiful, most tasty. Each one of them will have a different flavor, like the kakadis here. They are such beautiful varieties. This, for example, is called the um, alu kakadi from the northeast. I, I travel a lot in, lot in the northeast. 
and it's a most deliciously flavored uh, cucumber you have got this is the puna kakdi very famous variety till 20 years ago you would find it all over in maharashtra but today it's almost extinct this one is called or uh, this particular one is called doska it's a beautiful round cucumber that looks like an apple but you crunch into it and it's got a lemon flavor um, uh, we have tomatoes you know these are all photographs of tomatoes just look at the varieties this looks like a grape um, just look at so many varieties at Haryali seeds we have more than 22 varieties of tomatoes bindis you think bindis there is no look at each one of these these are all bindis these are all desi varieties of bindis look at this yellow colored one purple colored one this is the uh, spineless bindi this one from Israel is called the star of David because if you cut it you can see the Jewish star outline uh, this one is a white variety of bindi I mean brilliant and bindi how easy to grow it is all these desi varieties you can grow them so easily because they are tough they are like our street dogs you know they don't need the wet to be uh, tending to them they are desi and so it's so easy to grow and uh, look at these varieties of uh, pumpkins and squashes courgettes uh, tulsis and basils we have about 17 varieties of indigenous tulsis lemon flavored tulsi cinnamon flavored tulsi licorice flavored tulsi so many varieties kapoor flavor kapoor tulsi which is the original one not the fake one that you get in the market today so so much is there that's available with us and we need to save these vegetables otherwise these will be lost from the planet so there are business models that can be done through this like there was this techie farmer who grew this particular variety of tomato which he called candy and he sold it for 300 rupees a kilo wholesale now if my farmers get 20 rupees a kilo they will dance and celebrate and yet there was this techie boy selling it for 300 rupees a kilo so farmers are there friends are there but my biggest hope for saving these vegetables are you people because you are urban gardeners even if you can have two pots on your balcony or two a few pots on your terrace or a little small bagicha that you have in your uh, home you are my best bet to save these seeds because what I found was that when urban gardeners grow these seeds they get a social reward when the lady of the house grows a bindi purple color and she posts it on Facebook 1000 likes guaranteed but in all that you're doing a wonderful service of saving these vegetables for posterity so join me and let's save these vegetables thank you